In this module, we'll show you how to clean or replace a clogged injector or screen. Symptoms are overfill of water in a brine tank, no soft water, or salty service water. If you suspect injector problems with a 5600 mechanical, please begin by checking to make sure all connections are airtight. If all connections are airtight, we then need to depressurize the system. Please reference our other videos regarding these topics. Once the system has been depressurized, we can then remove the injector cap and assembly. You'll loosen the two screws that are on the unit. We've already removed the assembly from this valve so that you can see it easier. Once you have it removed from the valve, you can then remove the cap and screws. You then have access to the screen assembly. The screen assembly is hollow at both ends. It can be cleaned with a soft brush or warm water if there is debris. Do not be alarmed if there is a small crush on one end of the screen. This just indicates that the unit has been installed. We can then move on to the injector assembly. This uses our 1600 brining assembly, which uses two pieces. The top piece has an open orifice for the water to flow through. There is a secondary assembly that is inside that also has an orifice of a larger size. Both of these can be cleaned with a soft brush or warm water. If you cannot free the debris from the injector, you would want to replace them. We can then move on to our brine line flow control assembly. We can then unthread the brine line flow control from the assembly. We want to make sure that we can see through this in order to make sure that the water can flow in and out of the unit. If we cannot see through it, we can remove the white clip and inspect the flow control. The flow control that is in here is a small washer. We want to inspect it and make sure that it is free of debris. If you cannot clean it with a soft brush or warm water, you would want to replace this. When we reinstall this, we want to make sure that the numbers are facing up before we put the retainer in. Since we have this assembly off, we can also inspect the brine valve and the drain line flow control. The brine valve pulls straight out. We can check the O-ring to make sure it is sealing properly. You can then move the spring and articulate the valve to make sure there is no debris that is caught on the lower part of the plunger. The last component is our drain line flow control. We use our tool in order to loosen the fastener that is in here. Below the fastener is a flow washer. The numbers that are on the washer indicate the flow to the drain. When we reinstall this, we actually want these numbers to be facing towards the inside of the flow control. We can then return our retainer back onto the unit. Once it is snug, we can then reinstall our injectors. There are different materials and colors for the injectors. Please make sure to match the color and material that is in your original injector system. Each one is used for a different tank size as well as system type. For our system, we are going to reuse the white injectors. If your system has a one-piece black injector, this is used for filter applications. There should be no opening in the injector as filter systems do not require regenerant. We can then also check the o-ring that is inside the body. This o-ring can also be damaged and you would want to look at replacement when you change out the brine valve. We then use approved lubricant on the o-rings here. And reinstall into the assembly. We can then go to our brine line flow control, again lubricating any O-rings and reinstalling into the body.
snug the lower injector, and then install the top portion of it. Once they are snug, you can install the screen. We can then reinstall the cap and return the brine assembly to the valve. Good luck and thanks for watching.